Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club, and we're in Movie Studio 16 Platinum, and we're going to talk about my top 10 quick tips to really kind of make your workflow more efficient. Just things that make something a little easier, fix a problem, or uh, make your editing go faster. So these kinds of tips, I think, are just invaluable to know. These are things that I've learned or picked up over time, and I would like to teach them to you. So let's get started. Alrighty, so my first quick tip is if you're moving something from your explore so in the explore tab if you're grabbing a video and you drag it in to your timeline it works just like that right you've just dragged in a video to your timeline but let's say you wanted to just do the video not the audio you can actually right click it and drag it to the timeline while holding your right click button and then when you let go just hit video only and add video across time and then you've just imported your video and you can also do the same thing with audio only to just import your audio and I can imagine so many scenarios where I should be using that more often myself. Alright so this tip applies to doing L cuts or J cuts. In the past with tutorials I've often kind of when when showing people this I've showed them to hit this ignore event override grouping and to shrink or grow your video or to shrink or grow your audio respectively to create an L or J cut but there's a better way to do that and I often I don't do it because sometimes it's easier to show people an exact way they can see visually than use a keyboard shortcut but this is so much easier if you don't want to scroll both the audio and video together all you have to do is hold shift while you do it and you'll just scroll whichever one you've selected and when you let shift go the events are still grouped so you don't have to ungroup the events and risk moving them and unsyncing them you're gonna hit control of these there so that is a quick and easy way to L cut and J cut so as many of you know, it's super easy to create a fade type for audio or video in Vegas because you can just grab the corner and create a fade. But I think what a lot of people don't know is you can actually right click and change the fade type to any kind of fade type you want. And you can see that these fade types, here's a linear fade type. They're just different ways in which you can uh, slowly have the image or audio fade out at a different rate. And what's cool about this too is you can actually mix and match and you can even uh, change the fade types individually for your crossfades as well where you can get all sorts of interesting uh, crossfades that last different lengths and time for each video. So something that if you do not know this you definitely need to know this. Hitting control and Z at the same time, control Z, will undo and you can hit it multiple times, will undo your mistake. So if you've accidentally messed up your entire timeline with one swift horrible stroke all you have to do is hit control Z and you fixed it so something I th wish a lot of more people knew if you're a subscriber you already know this one but how to import a lot of photos at once so a lot of times when you're importing a bunch of photos you might just grab one at a time from your Explorer from your project media tab and drop them in but if you want to add a whole lot of photos at one time you can actually just go to insert and slideshow and you can build hold slideshows it'll pop this window up right here I have a tutorial going over more settings you can go to add pictures you can just grab a set of pictures it'll organize them for you and then you can hit start at cursor if you want it to start here or that, sorry, that start at cursor or start at the beginning. You can actually select an exact time code you want, how long you want them to be, how long you want them to overlap, the kinds of transitions you want. And that is just really a slideshow in a box right there. You can do it in ultra small links and create more of a claymation, or you can do ultra long links and have more of a long scrolling slideshow or menu video or something like that. So if you just hit create there, then boom, uh, it did it. Here, let me hit start at cursor. That's what I meant to do. If you just hit create here, then boom, now we've imported a whole bunch of photos and they all have this little gradient wipe because we selected hearts and stars. They have different gradient wipes for the transition. So that's a quick and easy way to just import a slideshow and it's something that you can just really save a ton of time with. So when it comes to your timeline and your cursor position, you can actually change that to exact amount. So instead of scrolling your cursor up here, if you just want it to move over 12 frames, all you have to do is go to this corner right here where it tells you your exact cursor posi cursor position and double click on it. And then you can hit a uh, plus 12 and you've just moved it 12 frames or you can hit minus 50 and you just moved it back 50 frames and that works too if you want to type in an exact time code and move the cursor to that exact time code that works as well so that is cursor positioning so overriding snapping is something where if you didn't want if you wanted a few frames of black in between here it'd be really kinda hard to do it because when you're moving around 
like next to your cursor see that's a snap right there or it snaps that little blue line or that yellow line is where it makes sure that your video lines up exactly with something similar in events and, and as all these events are moving and swooping, swooping around together. So if you don't want it to snap, if you need something awkwardly off, you can scroll in and have a little better, better control at a single frame. Or while you're zoomed out, what you can actually do is just hit shift and it'll override the snapping. So as you hit shift and move it through, you see there's no longer any snapping, which can be very good or very bad depending on what you're trying to do. But if you need snapping gone, holding shift will do so. Then when you let it go, it comes right back. So that's overriding snapping. So another thing, as you change your rate or your audio volumes and things like that, it might get hard to get it exactly back to zero, especially with how big your event, how big your tracks might be sized on your window. So instead of just relying on your mouse to do that, you can actually just double click and it will go back to its default value. And that is super handy. That's a super quick way to just go back to where you started from and either start over or fix your mistake. So we've all been in a scenario where you have a timeline just about finished and you just want to have something crossfade, but you can't add more to it you need to actually just move the track because you need it to crossfade exactly where it is. Well, when you create that crossfade there, it actually undoes the crossfade on the previous track. And like I said, in this scenario, we're pretending that this isn't a picture. This is something where you need the exact video that's on there to be there. So if you need everything behind your timeline to move with you, what you can actually do is select Auto Ripple, and that will move your entire timeline together. See how all of these events move at the same time? Look at that. See, they all move together. Instead of with it unselected, they move apart. Now, I'm going to have a more detailed tutorial on Auto Ripple because there's a few different ways you can use it. But if you're not using Auto Ripple and if you're instead, you're individually moving everything when you've done something wrong, that is difficult to do and waste a lot of time. So you need to start practicing toggling Auto Ripple. You don't want to leave it on all the time, but you want to turn it on when you need it and then turn it off when you don't. So this last one is one that I think a lot of people really need because I get a lot of comments on, on how to fix this. If you've resized a track or you've accidentally minimized all your tracks, what you've actually done is just a simple shortcut. So uh, tilde will short all of your tracks. Tilde is just, it's just a key that's below escape and above tab next to the one key. When you hit it, you can return your, your tracks all back to normal or you can minimize them so you can see your broader timeline. So if you have a whole lot of tracks, like a whole lot of audio tracks, you can see a more bird's eye view of what you're looking at. But if you want all of your tracks to go back to normal size, like you don't like the fact that all your tracks are different sizes, just hit control tilde and it'll remove move all your tracks back to the normal size. So tilde will toggle between your current resizings and your smallest size and then control tilde will make everything the same standard default size for tracks. This has been my top 10 quick tips for Movie Studio 16 Platinum. Like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more. If you do anything through my affiliates link, rather subscribe or re-upgrade uh, or anything like that to Vegas, that super helps out my channel a ton. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. We're almost to 1,000 subscribers. See you next time.